Okay, hey everybody. Um, been distracted for a week or so um, with some programmers, some EEPROM programmers um, or chip ICE programmers and stuff. So I figured uh, I picked some extra ones up and I figured I'd do a quick video. Maybe it'll help other people because there's a lot of times people ask, you know, what programmer should I get, blah, 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 for, um, for arcade games and stuff. So this is really specific to arcade games, but I've always had this GQ4X. Um, you can get it at MCU Mall, I think. And there, I'm not going to do detailed reviews and stuff, but I figured I'd review the benefits real quick of each one. So I've had this for a while. Um, it is USB connected um, connectivity, and it has an external power supply. the The benefit of this one is first, it works with like Windows 7, Windows 10. I think um, I don't. Uh, I've tested on Windows 7, Windows XP, etc. And it does do chips up to 25 volts um, for programming, which is basically most of the old arcade chips. So this has come in handy and I've used it. I have had some troubles with it. And there are some weird like little bugs or little, little things that you can make, uh, make it a little bit better um, configuration wise. But this is kind of my go-to that I've had for a while. Recently, um, the power on the USB has not been sufficient, and I'll show you that um, in the uh, video as well. So I, ha I have to use the external power. Um, and then I needed to burn a PAL chip instead of an EEPROM. Let me show what an EEPROM looks like real quick, I guess. Yeah, so this is... Um, sorry. This is an EEPROM chip right here. It has a, a window on it. This one is a 2532. If you can see that or if it focuses. This is a 2532A, um, which is important because it's probably lower. Pro this is probably 21 volts um, to program it versus 25. But anyway, this is what an EEPROM chip looks like. You find them on a ton of arcade boards like this. This is a an Atari tube in, I think, and you can see all the EEPROMs with the, the windows covered um, over here. So they're all over the board. Um, anyway, I needed to program a PAL chip or GAL, I think. Um, no, it was a GAL chip, I think, um, for a high score save kit. And the GQ4X does not do GALs. And it's a smaller chip. It looks more like something like this. I don't think that is one. Yeah, this is a, a 74 LS something, but it looks very similar. It's a smaller form factor, um, and the gal doesn't do it. So I bought this cheap. This is like maybe 50 bucks or even less on eBay, and it's called the XG something, XG ECU Pro or the TL8662, and it's USB, and it's Chinese, and it works, you know, with w Windows computers, so you can see there. And I'm actually starting to like this a little bit. So not only can it do most of the arcade chips, but it does have a peak voltage of 18 volts versus the 25 volts for the GQ4X. But um, I'll cover, I think, this a little bit more. You don't really need... Honestly, you could get by with just this cheap thing here. Um, and read read do all your reading of chips with this as well as program some gals and and you and i'll talk a little bit more about why you don't necessarily need a 25 volt uh, programmer if you want to just get by just like um, test chips or occasionally burn them this will be fine the other benefit is it does test some ttl chips too so a whole bunch of these uh 74 you know, LS 10s, you know, LS whatever, um, 74. There's just a ton of these TTL chips on boards, and sometimes you want to test them. This little tiny cheap thing will test a lot of those TTL chips as well, which is kind of like an added benefit. So the fact it does most EEPROMs um, and might not program them, but it should be able to read almost all the EEPROMs that you have except for tri-voltage ones. And you should be good with the uh, programming certain versions of GALs, like Lattice, I think, brand. Anyway, okay, so when then on K 
KLOV, I think it was, um, gosh, what was his name? Or his handle, I guess. Um, I can't remember. Somebody, Hell, Hellraiser, I think. Hellraiser. Uh, posted this ROM Max 4G, um, which is really nice, but you need to have an ISA card. So the way, like, a lot of these old old school programmers worked that were um, in PCs, they actually came with an ISA card, and then the ISA card has, like, a 40-pin connector there or something, and it connects to this uh, chassis. The thing, you know, this obviously has, four, you can program four chips at once, um, but I think, it's in my theory, hopefully in this video we'll prove it out, that these ISA um, versions um, of, of chip burners um, are extremely fast. I think they, they program really fast, I think. Um, and so far, based off my testing, it worked great. Downside is, is that you need a computer that has an ISA slot, and you probably have to run DOS or FreeDOS or DOSBox or something similar. Um, the other benefit is this thing is built like, you know, commercial quality. These things are kind of like hobbyists. They're plastic. The 40-pin ZIF socket. I mean, it'll, it'll probably hold up for as much as we use it. But if you're doing a lot of programming, I bet these things would eventually, you know, get, get worn out or something. They're not... It's you know it's more cheap cheaper components than probably this thing. This thing was you know is built really sturdy. It's completely metal. You could drop this thing and I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, so and I mess with that. I'm gonna do program a chip with with each one of these in the video. I think. Um, and then on Facebook somebody posted up um, some programmers and I was like, well, might as well, right? I've never had one of these Needums. A lot of people like these Needums. Um, electronics EMP 20 and the benefit here now this is does require an external power supply and it's a parallel port so you have to use a parallel port the EMP 20 requires a DOS uh, prompt but you can use this in Windows XP with a special driver and it has these family modules like this now you probably only need the zero, a few of them, like the 01A programs almost all of your 8-bit ROMs. So from 2716 all the way up to 27080, if you can see that. So pretty, pretty um, cool little device. Um, I think I was exploring and learning about these. These things cost about 350 bucks or somewhere around that brand new back in like 2001 time period. That's what, I think that's when this one was like at the end of its life was around the 2001 time frame and they were like um, 300 bucks. Um, in that same Facebook deal that I got, I got this EMP30, which is a step up from the EMP20. Um, it programs even more chips um, via different modules. So you have these family modules like this. This is a 301, which is what you need for most of the arcade kind of EEPROMs. Um, and then you have like a dip um, 48, that's what this is, whoops, dip 48 there, um, and this, I'll, I'll hook up onto the tripod and explain it. This also requires a parallel port and external power, um, but it's very robust in, you know, high quality kind of system. This thing, I believe, costs like around a thousand bucks if, um, um, brand new back in 2001 so kind of gives you an idea now these all these chip all these programs you can get probably for less than a hundred bucks used the gq4x i think is around a hundred bucks brand new this is like probably 50 bucks brand new and you can get these for if you're lucky uh, working under 50 but i mean around 50 or under a hundred bucks i would think um maybe <laughs> um but you can also use um adapters like this to do PLCC chips or um, other other style chips. So this adapter is specifically for the EMP20, whereas the EMP30, do I have an example? Yeah. You actually slide the adapter in here, if I can get it like this. So you change the adapter on the EMP30 a little bit differently. 
just like that. And then you can do PLC 44 chips, and obviously you'd have to change out your family module there. So a little bit more modular can definitely do more chips, like including PLCC chips, etc. Um, but honestly, most of the stuff we're going to do is dealing with the uh, the dip style uh, chips. The other thing is I'll mention is these these um, adapters that I got now. Like this one here, this EBC company, I guess. Um, what is that? PD44. So this is for a PLCC44 pin um, chip. This thing is was like a hundred bucks, brand new. And I think on eBay they go. They're not cheap. I mean, they, you probably in you know go for about fifteen to twenty five bucks. I'm sure. Um, and these clamshell ones are really nice too. If you can see here, oops, I don't know which one. This one's probably like a 20 pin or something like that, but a nice little clamshell. These things are, are were not cheap, uh, brand new. And here's another clamshell. I think this might be a 44 pin one. And you can see that. And the reason I mention that is because these adapters are definitely way better than the kind of adapters you get with the uh, TL-866 because there's it's hard to get the chip back out whereas the clamshell you can barely put the chip in and it put, just barely pushes it down and you can read it and it comes right out same thing with this little thing here you push it in and it pops right out um, but the adapters here is fine for like every once in a while but if you were doing a ton of these style chips these adapters would suck um, good for like once in a while, but not good if you were going to do a lot of it. So, which we're all mostly hobbyists, so we don't do a lot of anything really. So that's kind of the overview. So I think what I'll do is I'll set up my little DOS rig that I, with my ISA card, and we'll go through the user interface and maybe burn some chips because I want to test the burning of all of them anyway. Um, and so we'll we'll test some, show you the user interface, and maybe some pros and cons of different um, differences on the user interfaces and the uh, software. All right, be right back.